Hello, welcome to our session at the Pathlock Innovation Series. We are excited to have you here. Our presentation right now is with Chris Redkowski, who will introduce himself in just a moment. He's the Director of Solution Management at SAP. Our topic right now is SAP S4 HANA Finance and Risk Solutions AI Gen, Gen, AI, Gen AI for Access Governance Processes. All right, excellent. Um, thanks, Stephanie, and welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Radkowski. I'm the Director of Solution Management for SAP, and I'm focused on access governance. I'm the solution owner for the access governance portfolio, and there are a number of products within that, including the Pathlock uh, Access Violation Management Solution. So if any of those, any of you are curious about those, you can uh, go over to sap.com and, uh, you know, search on access governance and, and uh, details about those solutions will pop up. Um, the, the presentation today will talk about some future looking uh, functionality. So we ask that you please uh, don't, don't make purchase decisions based on uh, the presentation today, um, as we can't guarantee all of the functionality is gonna be there in the future. Um, the presentation today is kind of divided into two, two categories um, or two sections. Um, the first first half of the presentation will talk about uh, kind of uh, scenarios that we have implemented in the solution already, um, things you can take advantage of. And second half is are things that we're thinking about, um, you know, capabilities that are that are out there that will have an effect on access governance in the future. And for those of you that are interested in AI, there are uh, a number of uh, announcements and capabilities that are out there for anyone to explore. Um, clearly, this is going to have a profound effect on all of us. Um, I was able to use some AI tools, ChatGTP, GTP, for example, I'm sorry, GPT, for example, um, to generate some of the content we're going to see today. Uh, you know, there are you know any kind of content generation, whether it's whether it's images, text, maybe even human voice, other kinds of things. Are going to be, you know, able to be uh, generated by AI tools. Um, you know, Microsoft, for example, has invested a lot in security, uh, a number of different co-pilots, including one for security, which can do some pretty astonishing things. And so, I saw a demo of Microsoft showing how a security co-pilot could, with a code snippet, could basically show you how an attack occurred within an environment. And so. Um, you know, so that is kind of a, an indication of, you know, things to come, for example. Um, today we're focused on access governance. And unfortunately, I don't know why the graphic isn't on this slide, but, you know, access governance is about governing access to your applications. And at SAP, we kind of think of it in about five different modules. So we have access risk analysis, there's role management, uh, access certification, uh, the access request and user provisioning as a process. Um, and we, we, we connect in the privileged access management with that. So in our solutions, we talk about access governance, just want to level set with everyone that basically that's what it consists of. Uh, and so uh, for any of you that are interested, um, if you go to uh, Microsoft, Microsoft Bing is leveraging the latest chat GPT, um, Microsoft, Bard has some fantastic capabilities, and there are um, lots of other tools out there that are that are coming along. And what we're seeing now is that um, you know you can do you can do crazy things like uh, crazy simulations and even generate software code with these uh, types of solutions. So I'm going to show you a screenshot of how we're able to generate the UI for the access request uh, uh, API that we exposed for access control. And you can do that literally with uh, 30 seconds on, on Google Bard or any of the other tools. It will automatically generate a UI for our um, a service that we expose um, to enable integration. And so, you know, it's a very simple UI. It doesn't have a lot of, you know, checks on characters and things like that. But, but nonetheless, you can generate that easily and quickly. So I think that what I want to leave you with is that AI will will be there to generate content of nearly any type and is pretty amazing at both simulation, so simulation of 
different software applications as well as maybe even simulating a person. So you could you know, conceivably write something in the style of or pretend that uh, you are a certain person and generate content. So this uh, has a whole number of implications that um, that we will uh, we will be we will be exploring to to make our lives easier in terms of um, our access governance processes. So we've done a lot in the solutions today, uh, mostly around I would say they're kind of matching or sort of machine learning uh, capabilities. So looking at different types of behavior and trying to find anomalies um, or things that might be of concern that we can flag and incorporate either in a risk a risk scoring engine um, or or a further pattern matching and um, you know and automation so each one of these can have a particular loop as associated with them and I'm going to walk you through some of the scenarios so we we do um, in the solution we have a risk scoring engine we take take into account the user what organization they're a part of you know is that particular role or entitlement you know, critical or sensitive, or maybe has some kind of, uh, you know, uh, revenue associated with that, we kind of boil that down into a risk score. And that risk score can kind of change based on, you know, activity, um, frequency of activity, or, um, you know, the amount of transaction volume that, that um, or, or, or dollar volume that's going through that, uh, that particular transaction. So we can kind of, in, in the solution today, sort of, use that information to help guide our activities around uh, you know managing access or applying sort of mitigating controls or making the ultimate uh, decision on whether that uh, you know that particular role or entitlement is appropriate for that user um, another area that we're we've invested a lot in is in any any areas in the solution where uh, there's a lot of repetitive events and uh, maybe you know, maybe the user doesn't have all the information that they need to make a decision, or, you know, or maybe there's additional sort of details that are difficult to get to. Um, we've been using uh, machine learning and AI to uh, to help prevent rubber stamping or to provide better sort of information that might help an approver or a reviewer make the right kind of decision. So, um, it, broadly speaking, it's sort of around decision support. Um, and it's using sort of a pattern matching, maybe clustering anomaly detection capability. So it's not really generative AI, but it is it is a you know based on machine learning. I'm going to show you a screenshot of how, with privileged user management, one of the key things is to perform a um, an activity review or log review process after a session closes. So if someone needs elevated access to a system for some kind of critical situation, um, you know we have a, a feature that allows them to you know, get in or log into that system as a as a firefighter, firefighter user. And then there's activity logging that tracks their activity and then correlates that or compares it with the original reason why the users indicated they needed to get into the system. So when you launch a firefighter session, there's a reason code that you pick, you know, hey, I need to fix the address for a vendor master. And then you go through and, and review the activities and then there's a, a behavior analysis that checks to see whether there's some kind of activity or transaction that was maybe not consistent with, you know, the original reason, reason to fix their vendor master. And so the, the solution will flag that as, hey, this is unusual. Um, you know, is this something that you want to approve or do you want to, you know, do you want to take further action and investigate, you know, why, you know, a particular activity occurred. So in in the similar kinds of cases where you have you know humans or users that are involved in approving access requests you have the same kind of a thing where you know the role names may be um, difficult to understand or may they may not necessarily indicate what kind of access is being approved um, we, we try to indicate that using various different tools hey this access is not consistent or maybe it's not appropriate for this user in this organization and so forth to to try to uh, at least highlight to the user, hey, maybe this isn't isn't the right assignment to approve. Maybe it's introducing some kind of uh, issue or risk. Maybe you want to take um, further action. So the, uh, additionally, you know, I think if you kind of expand that one step further, um, there are a number of ways to sort of automate this process in a in kind of a closed loop process where maybe, hey, if there's some kind of external event that's causing um, additional risk, 
causing uh, potentially some kind of impact, whether it's a security or financial impact or an organization, or or maybe you know maybe it's um, I don't know uh, related to someone not getting the access they need. You know maybe that's some kind of um, you know represents some kind of uh, you know combination of user experience and or you know financial impact. So you want to make sure that you catch that and then maybe automate the process of assigning a risk based on a risk or an AI uh, score. So I wanted to take you through a, a couple examples and um, you know, these screens are maybe maybe a little bit tough to read, um, but within the within the SAP access governance or and or um, access control solution today, there are already, um, you know, there's already data that's available to help try to optimize uh, the number of assignments that users are granted, um, try to optimize any kind of, um, you know, risk or fraud or misuse, um, um, uh, cost, security, and, uh, and automation. And so when you go through the process of running um, a risk and or critical access analysis, what this is doing is showing you all the possible examples of potentially toxic access and or, you know, access that might have, you know, a large it might be very sensitive to an organization. So maybe you're Coca-Cola, you don't want people accessing the you know, the materials you need to make the product. Maybe if it's um, you know, a large organization, you're you're you know, you want to be very careful about who you grant the ability to make wire transfer payments to, for example. And if you look here on the on this um the screen behind the scenes there, you can see that the the, the solution kind of gives you a blow by blow. Hey, this user has a certain number of risks. And then you can run through the process of trying to remediate that access and you get a couple different indications. So um, firstly, you get the indication of how many of the potential toxic assignments have, you, have been resolved. So that gives you a score from zero to 100%. And then um, how you actually remediate that risk can be accomplished in a variety of ways. One is an AI-based tool that automatically pulls out the assignments that uh, aren't being used, for example, in the sort of simplest case, but then, and there's an AI sort of capability behind the scenes that says, hey, you know, this particular role is very similar to this other role, and this, this one doesn't have a risk, so why don't you change that particular assignment to this one? You won't have, an, you won't have uh, the toxic assignment or SOD risk anymore. And so we're going through a process of trying to simplify the, uh, you know, what many organizations are dealing with in terms of trying to minimize any kind of um, the chance of, you know, risk or fraud where somebody could essentially make payments to themselves or someone else. So, so we've incorporated AI into this process um, to try to make this simpler. I mean, partly within SAP systems, I mean, you, you, the name of the role itself may not reveal a whole lot about what it does. So, you know, that is also a critical step in terms of, you know, revealing that to the approver or reviewer who are going through the process of managing SODs, at least to, you know, show them what, you know, what this role is particularly, particularly uh, good at. So when you go through the process um, of remediation, I mean, firstly, you know, we're pri prioritizing which users have risks, you know, which ones are the, um, you know, have the greatest risk scores. These are the ones you should start with. Um, and so, you know, we have a number of different metrics um, that go into this risk, risk score. You can kind of customize that. So, you know, the transaction sensitivity, usage, uh, business process, for example, a user's organizational role, whether they're in finance or marketing. I think there's a lot of this that organizations do in terms of assigning system access. Hey, you're in marketing. You know, these are the kinds of systems and role roles you should be assigned. If you're in finance, they should be different. A finance person shouldn't have access to a marketing role or whatever. So, so that is uh, maybe another level uh, of activity, but we go through and sort of prioritize, you know, the, you know, the access. Um, there are a couple tools here, you know, you have simple and we, have, we call it refinement. So refining user access is taking exactly what they have currently and trying to Update it with a role that may be functionally similar, but may not may not result in a significant uh, risk or in chance of fraud. So uh, the tool is going through and it's proposing actions 
based on the risk, based on the you know chance of fraud or or misuse. And so it will go through and um, you know in the simplest case I mentioned uh, you know find rules that aren't being used. And not all rules have usage, but for those that do, that's critical to know. Hey, this user is not using that role. Maybe it's uh, not something that they need. Or you know, you go through a much more complicated process of trying to find a similar transaction that that doesn't present a risk. So for for those for those people that may not be familiar with the business process, they may not necessarily know which which are the roles that could be replaced. Uh, but this solution helps create what we call refinement proposals that you know if you go ahead and approve them, uh, they can be assigned and, and used to update the user access, thereby reducing your exposure, uh, potential fra fraud, and um, you know, and risk. So, um, so we've introduced this um, to help guide our customers through the process of, you know, once you've found some kind of SOD issue, you know, how do you resolve it? Um, and we've in introduced a number of combination of, uh, you, you, you know, uh, uh, machine learning and uh, and AI capabilities to do just that. So, um, you know, hopefully at the end of this, you'll have a 100% uh, compliance score, and you'll have you know access effectiveness is a uh, measure of the number of assignments that are being used. So you'll hopefully try to increase your access effectiveness because ultimately managing all the different role assignments for each user is costly, and the fewer that you have to manage, you know, is, is represents a cost saving. So you don't have to continually, you know, certify those and manage those particular assignments. So um, it, it's a reflection of both the, uh, uh, I guess, how good the security design is, how well it matches your employees and uh, or participants in the business process, and reflects what they're actually doing uh, in the system. So uh, two two scores there in in combination with. Uh, AI in terms of finding a right right role to assign to a user uh, helps to really improve the ability around uh, you know user user remediation, which is uh, typically a complicated process for most organizations. Um, so um, kind of jumping over to the privilege access management. So I explained a little bit earlier on in the intro about Privilege access management. So, privilege access management is a um, a solution that allows a user to check out a pre-configured ID that may have elevated permissions, and you can go in and perform those actions within the system. And uh, once you do that, you check out the ID, you give a reason code, you go into the system and perform your activities. And when you do that, there is a, an activity log which is created. And once you close the session, that activity log is sent off to to a uh, a reviewer who goes through and makes sure that the activities that you performed are consistent with the reason why you needed to go into the system. And it presents it presents the um, the log review in a you know in a in a way that the reviewer can understand if any of the activity is unusual or anomalous. And so it uses an AI algorithm to generate and flag unusual activity. So it finds activities that are uh, associated with certain kinds of reason, reasons. So you may wanna manage vendor master, you may have to look at invoices, you may have to go in and change an amount, you may have to, you know, you may have to go in and, and, and do some activity. And so compliance requirements often, um, often require that you document these kinds of unusual cases and that you are able to report on the review and report on those. And so you know, this tool helps to helps to ensure that you have an end-to-end -end process in place where you know there is a uh, process to check out a firefighter, go in and make, make changes in the system and then review the activity. And then the AI helps to flag um, activities that are, are anomalous and should be should be, re, be reviewed further, for example. And so, you know, the solution looks at this and, and says, hey, you know, this transaction is unusual. Uh, you know, this uh, let's we need a closer look at this. So, um, solution allows you to support that process. So, without this tool, you clearly you'd have to go through and look at 
the transactions in detail. You'd have to have a knowledge of the detailed, you know, T codes and what have you that were being executed and be able to understand which ones are relevant, which ones pose some risk, which ones are, you know, associated with uh, the, the the business process or the reason code. And so without that, without that sort of knowledge, you know, it'd be very difficult to determine whether there's some kind of issue with that particular session or not. So, you know, this really helps to save a lot of time and it breaks down, I think, what's something that's fairly technically challenging into something that's fairly simple for a reviewer to uh, to, to sign off on. Um, another area that we've had quite in, we've invested a lot in is is around is around role management. And I think the basic challenge in in SAP and other applications is that there is, really isn't a way of understanding what a role does just by its name, because each system has different kind of capabilities, exposes different risks, and the role name within SAP can vary, and there may not necessarily be naming conventions that are consistent. So it's not as if if you have an accounts payable access within SAP, it, it, you know there are there are T codes underneath that 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 may provide capabilities that uh, aren't inherent in the name itself, and so understanding what those do and what kinds of capabilities they expose is is really a big challenge. And if you have a system which with many thousands of roles and many thousands of users, um, it's uh, you know it's impossible for someone who you know, really isn't an expert in SAP or whichever system it is to know, hey, you know this is a very sensitive access. We have to really be careful about who has it and we need to be able to track and monitor that access. So, you know, the first step of doing sort of a role categorization is trying to trying to add some sense into, you know, what these kinds of roles do, who who has access in the first place, and you know, how do we how do we optimize uh, our administration processes? And so, within the SAP Business Role Management tool within Access Access Control. Um, what this does uh, is it actually finds roles that are, instead of trying to determine the role function from the name, it reverse engineers what the role does by who and what organization has access to it. And so it'll go through and it'll find it'll find common users, common organizations that all have similar kinds of assignments. Um, it'll help propose those as potentially business roles so you can, you know, group those into or align those with job functions. And that's the first step in terms of trying to ad administer a system that's very, very complex. You hide the complexity in a name that is you know, a business role, for example, that where its name might be consistent with, you know, the function that it required to support within, uh, within your organization. And so it starts by, you can't, it's not intended to be readable, uh, but you can imagine that all the roles there are on the top columns and the users would be on the, on the rows there. And you can see that if you have a continuous or all the same role assignments, it shows up as a, as a, as a block. And so the tool will go through and it'll recursively find the biggest set of common assignments among a group of users and call that a candidate business role. And so it will go through and find those recursively and you are able to sort those and tune those particular assignments, um, um, whatever the, however you want to with your, in your organization, whether you want to have roles that are created without any SODs, whether you want to have um, roles that don't cross any organizations, whether, um, you know, however you want to you want to group those. Um, normally, you would start out with um, a diagram like this that is scattered, and so by sorting and applying, um, you know, machine learning to this, we can kind of create these common assignments amongst users and group those into into a business role that um, you know can can be more easily administered. And that business role could have many different types of system, uh, many different types of entitlements within it. And this entity of the business role helps to, you know, make it a lot more easier to administer as opposed to, 
you know, many dozens of system specific entitlements across lots of different applications. So um, w one way that we're using machine learning to help simplify uh, admin processes for, you know, enterprise applications. All right. All right, so um, I, um, I'm not sure if we can take questions um, now or maybe wait till the end. Um, but I thought I'd take us through um, a couple a couple scenarios that we're seeing out there for for generative AI. So the way that the way that we're kind of looking at generative AI, I'd say there's there's a couple couple sort of different categories. So we're seeing we're seeing AI generative AI sort of being applied in um, you know I'd say sort of dynamic authorization or authentication scenarios and this involves bringing in other information either during authorization or authentication decisions that um, you know can can modify the you know the 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 decision whether approve or deny whether to you know um, dynamically apply a different condition in the authorization um, or authentication or whether to prompt for authentication, for example, if there is a certain event occurs or the application has a certain state. And so we're looking at this for, for a number of different, um, you know, different, applying a number of different types of contexts to this. You know, one of the key ones is, hey, if somebody is accessing the system and, you know, there's a segregation of duties rule in place, we, we want to check to see if, you know, this is something that has been um, you know, has been, you know, violated or not prior to having them execute one, one part of the, of the transactions associated with the SOD. So we want to be able to catch that before it happens. And this is a scenario where during the authorization process, the application can check to see, hey, is there an SOD um, or is there some other kind of risk um, involved? Do we want to, do we want to allow this transaction to proceed? Do we want to allow this person to transfer the 100 million to the offshore bank account or not? And so, you know, there is there is a, a lot of um, there's a lot of extensions that could be possible that will leverage uh, Gen I, Gen AI to do this. Um, and so, this is one one main area that uh, you know that we're looking into. Um, it, and I would say it kind of divides down into into a number number of different sorts of um, capabilities. So um, security, you know, threat detection and response is definitely one area that we're seeing enormous advancements happening. Um, I did mention the security example with Microsoft Copilot, where you could take a code snippet and reverse engineer the attack, uh, and so. <laughs> This is absolutely astonishing. It's going to certainly change security uh, in the future. Um, I think this is a program that hopefully SAP will be participating in. Um, you know, natural language processing is another where you know we're using Gen, we're using AI, Gen AI, to, um, to 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 use voice to initiate a whole series of events. So, uh, I mean, we're you know, Siri, um, Alexa, you know, often th this is a an AI or machine learning application. And so to the extent that we can apply this to use cases for our applications is, is a really is incredibly important because you know there's both the the process of granting access to applications is fundamentally required for employees to do their jobs, for customers to get access to the information they need to deliver services and so forth. So if you don't have access to something, it can both it can be it can be uh, affect a, your user experience, you know, it can affect all kinds of your your reputation and so forth. So there's both a risk aspect of it, and there's both a user experience and efficiency sort of part of it. So um, and they're and they're and they're both critical. So if you are you know you can imagine you're you're on you know maybe you're on your mobile device, you need you need to get access to something. You know maybe maybe um, you you know, being able to use your voice to uh, express, uh, you know, a support case, a, you know, a, you need to get access to a particular system, you know, we're, we're using this um, to, to generate for, ha for example, an, an access request. Hey, I need access to, 
um, you know, I need access to the, the bomb, I need access to particular information about a SKU, um, you know, you might need to generate an access request in Orbital to enable the system access to do that. I mean, clearly SAP ERP doesn't know about natural language that much. And so, you know, we're, we're using that um, in, in, in a closed loop. Hey, I've got an error that's preventing me from executing, you know, this particular um, you know, task I'm doing uh, for, for, for a customer. Uh, I need I need access or or what have you, which is which is one of the capabilities that AI is has become very good at, which is interpreting and simulating different kinds of uh, information that you might get from a, a system or 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 software code. Hey, what does this software code do? AI is extremely good at revealing what that what that code is doing. Which kind of leads into the sort of next sort of major category, which is around um, simulation and, and, and content or code generation, uh, you know, as it applies to, to access governance. So, uh, you know, roles, business roles, um, you know, SOD rules or, or critical access rules and policies that govern who has access to your business applications um, is uh, is one of the key aspects of governing access in the first place. So being able to generate those perhaps automatically or update them automatically is is an AI challenge uh, that, that we have been investing some effort into. Uh, if you go to uh, Microsoft or ChatGPT and ask it to, hey, I need to, you to show me the functional roles associated with you know, the accounts payable process or other finance process, it will spit out the kinds of functions that are involved in that already. So you, you know, you can, you can use that to generate content. You can use that to generate, um, you know, maybe even a, 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 like a sort of a preliminary list of SOD issues that you might want to, you might want to ensure or ensure that you have uh, processes in place to address. So some of that capability is kind of built into the sort of AI capabilities that are there already. Um, certainly you can use it to generate any kind of users or you know um, identities that you could simulate with or use to, um, to test out your process. Um, the kinds of risks you can use the AI to create uh, you know, maybe example risks or even, um, you know, based on what systems you have, hey, show me the risks that are associated with a combination of, you know, uh, Ariba and Concur or Ariba and Esfrahana and things like that. So there are um, there are capabilities out there that can help, help do that. Um, clearly in the area of mitigating controls where you're trying to test to see whether users have, um, you know, uh, have have executed or potentially you know have performed activities which might need review or could be a, a violation of a, of a policy. You want to uh, use your AI tools to to try to detect and um, take action uh, in those cases. And, and like I said, software code. I mean, this is uh, this is amazing. So you know you can you can use this to generate um, um, software code. I'm not sure if I've put the um, the example in here for generating the software code for the access request API, but uh, um, uh, we can make these slides perhaps uh, available, and I'll I'll stick the screenshot in there for that um, for that code. Um, so early in the presentation, we talked about dynamic authorization. So there are tools in place to do um, you know external ABAC based um, authorization, but this is an area where you know, approve or deny based on risk and context is clearly part of a, a combination of a maybe machine learning and matching capability, but also also AI can help um, in that process where, hey, I need access to a certain a certain transaction, a certain capability in the in the application. Uh, maybe I don't have the right access, but AI can help find the right access and um, deliver the deliver the capability that the user needs. I think we we work in you know many different environments where you know maybe in the course of a product development process you might you know might need to order some you know I don't know raw materials and you may not have access to that kind of thing as a normal part of your function but 
you need to go in there and you need to make you need to make a basic order. You don't have access. Um, it's it's critical for the business, and you want to go in there and and um, you know execute that access. You don't have a lot of time to wait, or waiting could be critical for your business. So um, we're trying to introduce capabilities that will automatically automatically grant that access with certain kinds of conditions that would allow you to execute that order and allow your project to proceed, for example. And so this is leveraging dynamic authorization capabilities. Um, I believe I believe Pathlock has some um, capabilities in in this area. So this is an this is something that we're looking into trying to um, incorporate in the uh, you know in, in our access governance portfolio because there's a lot more than just static administration processes to grant a role in an application. You know, I think in today's environment, that's become uh, something which needs to be much more dynamic and it needs to consider the um, the context prior to that happen prior to that happening. All right, so here here is um you know here is a um, this is an example of uh, of an of an error in SAP, and I took this. It's from a transaction called SU53. So the the the, the raw error message from SU53 is on the screen up there, and I just took that error, plugged it into uh, ChatGPT, and um, this text is explaining to me what this error is, you know, what this error uh, indicates, and so. With this, um, with this kind of a thing, you know, you you can definitely get more detail out of any kind of error code, uh, you know, that SAP is generating. And clearly, I had no idea what, what this was beforehand. But in this beautiful, very wordy text, I've got um, uh, lots of details, maybe even more details than I care to know about about the different transactions that have occurred and what you know, what's why is this error being generated. Uh, I mean, this error is, is generated largely because I don't have the right authorization to execute a, a transaction. And so this shows up in, uh, you know, in uh, SAP transaction SU53. And, um, you know, this is an error, and this is an area of opportunity to really create a closed loop around, around this. So, um, you know, you try to execute something in the system, you don't have access to, um, to that particular um, authorization. You need to get access. How do I get access? Okay, so um, this is something that an AI natural language processing can do. How do I get access to this? Um, you know, you can set your system up so that it could automatically assign this access based on the, the, the failed authorization in your system. Hey, let's make sure that this user can perform the task they want to. And so, um, you know, I mean, you could extrapolate this to your customers. Maybe you've tried to deliver a service or component to someone. Hey, I can't get into this particular um, system. And so you, you try to scale this. You're not going to have them call you, I don't don't think, in most cases. Maybe you'll have a, um, maybe you'll have a voice response system. Hopefully not, uh, you know, but uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of how, we can leverage AI to deliver a better user experience in terms of getting over hurdles, getting access to the, getting access that users need, um, making sure the functionality that we're delivering in our applications is, um, you know, serving serving its purpose, so to speak. And when I look at different kinds of uh, systems out there, I'm thinking of DHL. I I see. And maybe not, they're not the best example, but you know there there's a lot going on in terms of um, you know backend systems that um, I'm pretty sure are SAP um, that can expose information that might be critical if it's important. So um, users can leverage this in order to maybe get extra functionality and uh, you know and um, and understand better about, you know, how that how to get access or, you know, because the the negative side is, you know, looking through different systems and trying to figure out, well, this user has excessive access, we have to refine it. 
versus we, you know, this person should have access. How do how do I grant that to them in a way that is somewhat how manageable for my organization? Okay, so um, the you know, sort of next area that we've been looking at is is around sort of simulation and generation of different types of content in our system. So we talk a lot about the rule set, the SOD rule set, and uh, it's usually a big effort for organizations to manage to maintain their SAP rule, their their SOD rule set. And so, you know, here's here's an example. We've just, you know, asked. Um, you know, asked uh, Chat GPT about what kinds of rules we need for finance process. Um, you know, what sort of things should we be looking at? And um, you know, it spits out an amazingly verbose <laughs> example of, hey, you know, you got to look at purchase requisitions and purchase order approval and and so forth. And um, you know, the SOD rules that we deliver with our solutions are, um, you know, encapsulating this. However. Um, in a in a highly specific way that addresses all the different paths to accomplish those tasks within the SAP system. So um, you know, so so we see we see a case where you know these kinds of roles and policies can be more dynamic using AI, using generative AI. We can create these business roles, simulation of these business roles. Um, sort of analyze the system responses uh, based on you know, what kinds of authorizations are behind the scenes. One of the biggest efforts involved in implementing SAP is just making sure that in a large organization, users have the right kinds of entitlements they need to do their job. And an accounts payable clerk isn't in one region isn't always the same as another region, making sure that all of those people can do the jobs that they're hired to do. And so organizations go through a huge effort to try to harmonize, um, you know, different kinds of act, different kinds of business process specific steps that are involved in in each in each process in each country. And so when you create some kind of authorization within SAP, for example, um, you are trying to model those different steps, you know, and trying to um, trying to simulate those before you go through a huge scale of, uh, of implementation. But once we can sort of automate the process of creating these roles and entitlements, then it becomes a lot easier to leverage Gen, Gen AI and incorporate some kind of closed, back, uh, closed loop feedback process where, hey, I need access to this particular system. Um, AI can help generate and assign that particular access. Um, for a time period that's uh, that's appropriate. Um, hey, we're bringing on a whole a, a new customer, and they need their their um, you know certain group of employees need certain access. You know, we can automate some of those processes. And um, you know, like I said, I think this is um, you know this is just the the tip of the iceberg. I think you're going to be seeing a lot more uh, capabilities in terms of. How, how this sort of Gen AI feedback can be applied to both creation of content and access governance systems, as well as automating the feedback and dynamically updating um, the rules and policies that are governing that access. Um, this is the um, this is the code the code generation example that I had been referring to. Now this is very simple. Um, but if you ask uh, ChatGPT to create a UI for the access request API in Access Control, <laughs> this spits out a quite a uh, an interesting set of uh, uh, simple UI for that particular case. And so, you know, with um, with a little bit of work, you could actually implement this. Um, it would show up as a simple UI screen with all the right buttons and drop downs you need to create an access request um, using the API in in, uh, in access control or, or I, uh, SAP cloud identity access governance. And uh, yeah, I think, um, you know, this is just uh, the tip of the iceberg. I think that with uh, all the world's information on the internet now and the ability to 
automate uh, the, the coding, I think it becomes a lot less about the coding itself and about what you ask your AI system to do. And so I think that we're going to see um, a huge explosion in automation of both integrations for you know access governance scenarios as well as uh, as you know the content and rules and are you know behind the scenes that govern access I, I was going to say that this particular tool is very simple uh, but there are much much more sort of you know powerful examples of automated automated tools for for software uh, generation I would encourage all of you to go out and check and play around with uh, the tools that are available. So I kind of want to um, kind of want to uh, leave you with um, you know kind of a in a vision. I don't know if it's the most appropriate vision, but I think that AI will eventually result in. I think the analogy is a self-driving self-driving car. So I think we're going to turn our enterprises into uh, self-driving machines. I think as at least with respect to uh, user access administration and exposing our, our applications to the right users under the right conditions. I think that uh, a lot of the elements of the process that are sort of manual or have a, a human involved are going to be automated. And I've shown a glimpse of the areas that we have applied either a different additional information or capabilities using AI uh, to help further uh, improve both the visibility and the automation behind the processes. I think um, you know that's just the beginning, and so I think we're all going to be affected by uh, this technology profoundly. Um, uh, clearly, anytime you have to write something or generate some content, I think everybody's already using uh, the tools that are there. Um, but I think furthermore, as we get into um, security and risk, we're going to further automate this with a feedback loop that, that takes particular security and risk settings and actually dynamically makes a, uh, a change in the system. And so, you know, that's something that, um, you know, Will, will be happening with with AI and that's going to uh, and that's going to be a huge leap as far as you know both protecting and ensuring the integrity of our uh, our, our, our applications um, another area that we spend a lot of time on is you know compliance reporting and auditing I think this is going to be to the extent that we can audit automate it or uh, you know, some of it's uh, automated somewhat, but I think we're going to see uh, a complete self-driving enterprise that is, autom that is creating its own rules and policies that are consistent with compliance uh, regulations. It's going to be automating the process of you know assigning users, um, you know, and, uh, and risks, and, you know, associated with the you know the the risk tolerance. And I think that the uh, reporting and auditing is going to be is going to be fully automated eventually. So I don't know whether that's scary or not, but I think that's pretty much where we're headed. Um, so with that, uh, Stephanie, I think we're just about out of time. I wanted to leave a couple minutes for questions. So uh, why don't you see if anybody's hung in there for the whole time? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you do have any questions please type them into the questions box now and we'd be happy to answer any of those. Um, one question we have is, what are people using right now? Um, Google Bard or Microsoft? What immigration tools are they using? Well, I mean, I think um, what I'm, I think Microsoft has made in a, a huge investment and behind the scenes, there's Microsoft Chat GPT, and then you'll be seeing a whole series of announcements from Microsoft regarding security co-pilots and other co-pilots that leverage AI. So um, I, I see with, with Bing, it's a combination of the AI is just like literally like an internet search. It's just pulling information that it finds from different sources. It shows you the, the sources it's getting. And it's consolidating it into a, um, you know, consolidating it into a, uh, 
you know, a response that, you know, has a lot more detail in it. So that's one aspect. But I would say, I would say Microsoft and OpenAI are the ones that I've seen out there and seem to be kind of leading the way. And SAP, SAP has a, a whole set of AI services that are all being integrated with the applications. And so those tools are vastly different in, you know, one, you have, uh, you know, maybe ERP data set as a language model versus, you know, the entire internet, everything that's ever been written as a, as a data model. So I think it's going to vary based on uh, the, the, the kind of use case scenarios. Um, you know, but for now, from the broader sense, clearly Microsoft and OpenAI have a set of tools that are, you know, leading leading the way at the moment. Ho hope that answers the question. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Um, I think that's all the questions we have for now, but I just wanted to encourage anyone, if you do have any more questions, please email us at info at pathlock.com. And with that, I just wanted to say that I put a link into the chat if you want to attend any of our sessions tomorrow. It'll have the agenda. You can sign up there. And with that, thank you, Chris, for your presentation and thank everybody for attending. And we hope to see you at future sessions.